In this video, we are going to be going over seven different problems, all related to the first three chapters of Introduction to Circuit Analysis. For more problems and practice, there will be a link to a playlist in the description with almost 40 problems covering these topics and going into other topics that might be on an exam or homework. Starting with this first problem, we are told that a 12 volt battery supplies 130 milliamps to a portable music system. We need to determine the power delivered or absorbed by the music system. So we know that our battery is going is like this, and there is power going from our battery to our music system. Since the power is going from our battery to the music system, that means the music system is absorbing it. So the power is being absorbed by our music system. That means this is a plus. We're not going to have a negative in our answer. Now we need to find the power of our music system. We have to remember that the power formula is voltage times current. So we know our voltage to be 12 volts and we know our current to be 130 milliamps. However, we can't use milliamps in here. So we have to convert this to amps. We know that one milli is equal to 10 to the negative cubed amps. So we're going to have 12 times 0 0.13 volts times amps, which is watts. And this will give us that power is equal to 1.56 watts. Next, we need to determine how much energy the battery delivers or absorbs in five minutes. Well, in our previous diagram that we drew up here, we saw that the power is going from our battery into the CD. So since it's going out of our battery, it's being delivered. That means our answer is going to have a negative sign inside of it. And it's asking for how much energy is being delivered in five minutes. Well, this power formula that we found right here is in seconds. So we have 1.56 watts per second because power is measured in seconds. So to do this in five minutes, we need to convert five minutes to seconds. We have five minutes over one times one minute and there's 60 seconds in one minute. So we're gonna have 60 seconds right here. Our minutes are gonna cancel out and then we're gonna get 300 seconds. And we know that the energy wattage is power times time. So we're gonna have 1.56 watts times 300 seconds. It's also important to note that seconds is really written as an S. And so we have 1.56 times 300 S. And this is going to give us 468 joules because watts times seconds is joules. So that means our answer is going to be a negative 468 joules. And that's how you do this problem. Next, we have this problem. We are told the voltage and current at the terminals of the circuit our zero for t is less than zero and for t is greater than or equal to zero we have these right here that we're going to use looking at our circuit we know that the voltage goes into the positive out of the negative so it should be like this since our voltage and current are going in the same direction this is correct now for part a it's asking us to find the power absorbed or delivered by the circuit element at t is equal to 500 microseconds well, we know that the power is being absorbed because our current and voltage are going in the same direction. So our answer is going to have a positive in it. And then we also have to convert this from microseconds to just seconds. We also know that power is equal to voltage times current. And we have our current and voltage in here. So what we're going to do is just plug this in. And if we plug all this into a calculator, we're going to get 46.28. And this is measured in watts. So our answer for part A is 46.28. For part B, it's asking us how much energy is absorbed slash delivered by the circuit element between zero and 500 microseconds. We've already declared that this is going to be absorbed since it's going in the same direction. So we're gonna have a positive, but now we're looking between zero and 500 microseconds. When we're looking in between something like this, we have boundaries. And whenever we have boundaries, we most likely want to use an integral. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at our 40 and seven, and since these are constants, multiply them together to get 280 and bring this out front. And then I'm going to take the integral of our e to the negative 1800 t after multiplying it by this e to the negative 1800 t to get e to the negative 3600 t. After doing some basic differential equations, we get this. And from here, I'm just going to plug in everything. And after we plug in everything, this is what we're gonna get, this is equivalent to zero because we have negative 3600 times zero and anything to the zeroth power is one. So this whole part right here is just going to be a minus one. If we do this, we are going to get 0 0.649 and this is in joules. 
However, the answer is asking us to convert this to millijoules. And the conversion for this is one milli is equal to 10 to the negative cubed. So that means our wattage is 64.9 millijoules. And that is the answer for this problem. In this problem, we are told a student measures the voltage and current of the resistors as shown in the figure. The instructor then verified that the voltage was measured correctly. Then we are next asked, was the current measured correctly? Well, if we look at this, we can see that these are both measured correctly. So that's what we're going to be looking at. We're going to see if our diagram is incorrect. Our voltage is negative. So that means instead of going from positive to negative, it's going to go into the negative and out of the positive. We can see that our current is in opposite with our voltage over this resistor. So that means no, it was not measured correctly. Next, we are asked to find the power absorbed slash delivered by this resistor. We know that resistors absorb. They absorb energy because they are restricting or resisting the flow of energy. We also know the formula for power is voltage times current. So we're going to have power is equal to our voltage, which is negative 9.37 volts times our current, which is 0 0.56 amps. So we're going to get that our power draw is equal to negative 5.24. However, we're not done yet. Because we said that our A is not correct, we have to note that our current should be negative. It's asking us to correct any measuring mistake. So our current should be negative, which means this 0 0.56 should have a negative out front which means it'll turn this into a positive. So our actual answer will be 5.24 because this was measured incorrectly. Next, we are given this small circuit diagram. This isn't very good practice because of how small it is, but there is a lot better, more complex ones in the playlist link below. To do this one though, we're going to be looking at the power. So first we know that our power is equal to voltage times current. And we know that for the system, we have a source current going this way. Now we're going to look at the voltages of each of the individual circuits. So we have a plus going to negative and then a plus going to negative like this. For a power of 20 volts, we have our voltage, which is 20 volts, times our current, which is 5 amps. Since both of these circuit parts are in series with our current, the current is going to be the same throughout. So we don't have to calculate for that. However, if it was in parallel, we would have to since current splits throughout parallel. This gives us that the power for the 20 volts element is 100 watts. Knowing this, we can look at the P15 volts and this is equal to 15 volts times five amps. However, since our voltage is going in the opposite direction as our amps, you're gonna have a negative out front. So this is going to be a negative 75 watts. That is our answer here. And using Kishkoff's voltage law, since all of these voltages are in a closed system, they have to equal zero when combined together. So that means for the power at five amps, if we have our 100 here, and we have our negative 75 here, moving these over to the zero side right here, we are gonna get that our P of five amps is equal to negative 25 watts. And those are the answers for this problem. The next two examples are super basic. Again, there are way more complex ones in the playlist below, which are probably better for studying, but we're gonna go over the basics for here anyway. So for resistors in series like this, this is in series, the current is flowing through all of these and the current is going to remain the same. And that means that all of these resistors can just be added up into to represent one resistor. So all we're going to do here is just add the resistance for each of these. We have 145 plus 485 plus 4,839. If we set this equal, we are gonna get that our answer is 5,469 ohms of resistance. Next, we're going to look at our circuit in parallel. Well, for a circuit in parallel, this is a little bit different. We have to use a different formula instead of just adding them together. This formula will look like this, where we have parentheses in here, and then we have a one over all of our resistors that are in parallel. So we have 1 over 226 plus a 1 over 239 plus a 1 over 2484 or 1 over resistant 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3. Then we're going to raise everything inside of here to the negative first power. If we set this equal, we are going to get approximately 111 ohms of resistance. So right here we have 111 ohms. 
I talked about current flowing through this way and I'll do it in here again also. So the current flowing through like this is going to be the source current and then it's going to break up into this resistor. Some current is going to flow through this resistor and also some current will flow through this resistor given that it's connected on this side for it to go through like this. Lastly, we are given the voltage source, which is the far left side, producing 30 volts. So right here, into the positive, out of the negative, we have 30 volts. We need to find the current I1 through our 30 ohm resistor. Before we do this, I'm going to redraw this diagram just to make it a little bit easier to see. So when I'm drawing this, I know that our 60 ohm resistor should look something like this, where it would be right here. Our 8 ohm resistor would be up here. And then next we have our 30 ohm resistor down the middle with our current I1 flowing through it. And then after this, we have our 4 ohm resistor. And then we have an 8 ohm resistor right here. And then lastly, we have a 20 ohm resistor with I2 flowing through it. Something to note here, we're given the voltage and we know voltage through parallel resistors is the same. So that means the voltage going through this 60 ohm resistor and going through this 80 ohm resistor because our 60 ohm resistor and 80 ohm resistor are in parallel will both be 30 volts. However, after this, some of the voltage is being absorbed in this resistor, this 8 ohm resistor. So it's not going to be the same when it goes through here and through here. But what we can do is use Kishkoff's current law. And Kishkoff's current law is that all currents flowing into a node are negative and all currents flowing out of a node are positive. And a node is anything like this where the currents divide in direction. So right here is our node. For this node, we are first going to look at this far right side. I like to do that first. And this far right side, it's going out since it's going out of our node, it's going to be positive. However, this needs to be in parallel, or all of these need to be combined together. So we'll do that right now. I didn't make a mistake in writing this. This should actually be 80 ohms of resistance. So if we do this, we know that our 80 ohms and our 20 ohms are in parallel. So we just need to plug this into the parallel resistance formula, and then we get 16. This 16 ohm resistor, which is the combination of this, is going to be in series with this. So we can just add this together and then we get 20 ohms of resistance for this entire right side. So what we're going to have is some voltage, because the voltage in this node is just going to be V, over 20. Next we will look at this 30 ohm resistor. We see that we have some voltage, again it's the same voltage since these are in parallel, over our 30 ohm resistor. Again this is plus because it is going out. Next we are going to have a negative because this is going in, this current is going in, and we know that our resistance is 8 here. And since we are losing some of this voltage in our 8 ohm and 60 ohm parallel resistors, we are going to get a 30 minus our new voltage. However, since we have a negative out front, this is going to be a negative 30 plus voltage, and this will just be a plus. We can actually further break this up too to make this a V over 8 minus 30 over 8. We can move our constant over to the left side, and then after this, since all of our voltages are the same, we could factor them out. So we'll have 1 over 20, plus 1 over 30, plus 1 over 8. If we plug this into a calculator, we are going to get that this is 0 0.208. And so what we need to do is divide both sides by 0 0.208 to get a 1, or to get V by itself on the right side. So we're going to have 30 divided by 8, divided by 0 0.208. If we do this, we are going to get that our voltage is equal to 18. So the voltage going into this parallel system right here is equal to 18. Now to find the current through here, we're just going to put this voltage over the actual resistor that we're looking at, which is 30. And if we have 18 divided by 30, we are going to get approximately 0 0.6. And that is the answer to this problem. Those are all seven problems as well as how to do them and the answers. If you want more complex problems, they will be in the playlist link below. Also in the playlist is a Google Docs with notes that could be very helpful when studying or taking the exam.